Hello, my name is Belinda Lowe Mackey from the Grevy Zebra Trust in Kenya. And we are so thrilled to be joining you today for the Wildlife Conservation Network Expo. What's fantastic is that many of our team members are able to participate in this virtual event. And not just um, in the event itself, but also um, in this presentation, sharing the amazing work that they are doing on the ground in Kenya to save the endangered Grevy zebra. And it's my pleasure to introduce Julius Lekanit as our first speaker from the team. Thank you so much, Belinda. I'm so excited and delighted to be here. I'm here today to share with you my life story in conservation. And my life story in conservation cannot be separated with the story of my mother. My mother is a very hardworking woman, very passionate, always full of hopes and inspiration, and somebody with a lot of patience. I remember when I was 10 years old, when she got separated with my father. This was a time when she was full of pain and despair, but she never gave up. But one of the experiences that I really remember was during this time going out into the wild, looking after livestock. And the amazing experience that I, I witnessed was the gravy cypress grazing side by side with livestock. But it was so funny when the wildlife or the gravy zebras were not in the land. We felt so lonely. This was because we used to see the behavior of gravy zebras and know the threats and the dangers in the landscape. And one of the other things that the gravies really help us to do, we use the tracks to know where water is and where the pasture was. And my mother, one morning, when she woke up, she heard the brains of gravy zebra bachelors. And she told us that, you know what, rain is coming that the brain was a sign of hope. That's an experience that I cannot forget. And my mother, with all those hardships, with the challenges she was facing, she made sure that I would go to school. And while I was in school, my, the harding experience and going into the wild really influenced my course. I decided to take environmental science. And when I graduated, my heart was always in the northern, northern landscape, such that I decided to go back to that landscape. And here I got the opportunity to work with Gravy Zebra Trust. Gra Gravy Zebra Trust had a program, Gravy Zebra Ambassador Program, that was in Alberta, Northern Kenya. The wildlife in this area, especially Gravy Zebra, experienced pushing. But one of the happiest moments was when I was engaging with the local communities. First of all, I came to realize that what I learned to school about wildlife conservation, species conservation, was totally different. Because here, what matters was the people. You have to understand the needs of the people. And this really gave me the experience to learn and to listen to what the communities in the northern part of Kenya were experiencing. The other experience that I really learned here in 2012, when we were going on patrols with our ambassadors, them seeing the poo and the tracks of the graves really gave them hope. It gave them hope that tomorrow or another day they will see the graves. Seeing the tracks was enough for them. But during this year, while we were going out, we have seen the numbers of gravies have increased. We have seen so many groups and herds of gravies, such that the ambassadors has developed some attachment towards these gravies. Lena Getai, one of our ambassadors, developed an attachment to one of the gravy zebra in the plains of Alberta. And he named him Lopono meaning a ear gravy zebra. 
This is how attached our ambassadors are with the grave is ever. They are filled with happiness, just seeing them. And one of the amazing experiences that we are seeing in the northern part of Kenya is that the wildlife are increasing. We are seeing common zebras, the gravy zebras, and ostrich. This is really inspiring. Because for me, as somebody from this landscape, I'm seeing a possibility of having another Maasai Mara in the northern part of Kenya. Thank you so much, and I will welcome Sheila Fanel to give you more about the Gravy Zebra and Gravy Zebra Trust. Thank you, Julius. Gravy Zebra are endangered. Found only in Kenya and Ethiopia, less than 1% of their range is formally protected. Only 3,000 Gravy Zebra remain in the wild today. Gravy Zebra are the largest of the three zebra species. Thin, intricate black stripes cover their body, leaving their belly a startling white. They have a soft brown muzzle and their large round ears are a characteristic feature of their unique morphology. Gravy Zebra differ from their plain zebra cousins also in their behavior. They are specialized to survive in dry, arid environments and can go up to five days without water. Breeding males establish large territories that contain grazing and water that females need to survive. When females pass through these territories, it gives the males an opportunity to mate with them. Males that have not yet established territories are known as bachelors. They wait for any opportunity to challenge the breeding male and grab their territory. Gravy zebra live in the same environments as the Samburu, Rendile, and Turkana communities in northern Kenya and rely on the same resources as their livestock. Gravy Zebra Trust was established in 2007. We are the only organization that is 100% dedicated to conserving this endangered species. More than 93% of our team is employed from the communities living within the Gravy Zebra range. We work with warriors, women, elders, and we also work with schoolgoing and herder children. Our programs address the main threats to Gravy Zebra. These include limited access to water, loss of grasslands, habitat fragmentation through infrastructure development, and poaching. We have three main goals. The first is healthy rangelands to support Gravy Zebra and community livelihoods. The second is minimizing the impact of large-scale development on Gravy Zebra and other wildlife. We're so excited to embark on this project with our great friends, Owasso Lions. The third goal is monitoring populations and their health. Our team of scouts, warriors, and ambassadors cover a 10,000 square kilometer area in northern Kenya, monitoring and protecting the species. Where access to water is a threat to Gravy Zebra, we work directly with communities to ensure it is managed for exclusive wildlife use. Nowhere is this more apparent than in Lysamis, the most arid environment that we work in. In 2012, we established the Gravy Zebra Warrior Program. This team of 10 Samburu and Rendile warriors go out on a daily basis monitoring and protecting the species in one of the harshest environments known in Kenya. The volcanic plateaus can be considered hostile and inhospitable for many people and a lot of wildlife. But our Gravy Zebra warrior team often spend three months out on the volcanic plateaus monitoring the species and protecting them. It is my great honor to introduce you to Obaratroy Harugura, the leader of this amazing warrior team. Warrior Yobo, Ale Lambatalo Itugochi, the Gref Sibera, Yasuchere Mbatalo Sam Scound Yamar Savit. Yolo Chiyo the Nekara Lara Mata, Canalo Messi, Losium, Na Yolo Chulo Sam Sengobana, Gokodong, 
kaar on kalon kazini pokin ako do yon kare no do rum ko jetta na ko ko bo ngi simo jidi na la ko lo itu ko chari ko ngo ngi na la ko eh sai de ko mitani artam yol da ba jantu chukunye na ke sorungo no ge yol ko to ka be geri yol do ngana wiri aso lo itu ko chi no go na bo yo ngor ro senna ke ki ngor tam bato community mbata ito ki yo lo itu ko chi Nigga dola jo iyo la nana garama wole nge kear na nigga dola jo sana na sabo kear tal tongana tono bolo <hesitation> nigga bona bai to to aret ko <hesitation> loitu ko chi a isho ribot ngam bini ma pema o wone ta na nge <hesitation> ngo nigga ntoki si dai to kai som community ai funus community mede iyo lo file na ito bulni ngo jit file na yen ni ngo mede nyo ko ngo jit a pe mede gina to lo sana ordo itu neja. Ye iyo lo kita asane ja nugu bana ngor ro community ne jogi yo community asane dia mo keso bata na kita ngana amu kutu mo file ne kere dan le sana tuga na ke ba de liki ongkop wo to no boi tang mesi wo to ngana te seri ani wo si de tane chari buntai ai to bulung kujit fa ye to gi na do ro bu na ina odor na ai ko ne ja ye iyo lo to kuta ta kia te to ngane gi ri to i le gin to mo fundu su to inia Mata anin jai dogo iri asa as kere community, tina bata ingesi, tina bata angkare, nigen dogo iyo achu kunya mata ki akul tunga no long kujit, mata iki reti dogo iyo iti tunga no tam bata long kujit, ya reti me chomo iyo senna, pe ni ka chungkop senna oke ti, angkare ke kere kunya kuta iyo tunga no kas <hesitation> na sain ti aji ke ba di liki ong kop, ayan te reti iyo, mata jing to no bo, ayi to wale senna. Thank you, Harugura. Despite the Grevy zebra's suitability to arid, water-scarce environments, increasing land degradation and the resulting lack of pasture and water has pushed Grevy zebra to the limits of their survival. This is especially so during drought years. During drought years, Grevy zebra have to contend with reduced forage, increased competition with livestock and increasing vulnerability to disease. It is critical that we maintain their body conditions. During drought years, Grevy Zebra Trust has established supplementary feeding programs where we put out hay to support Grevy Zebra and ensure that they are able to make the increasingly lengthy journeys between pasture and water. This is especially vital for lactating females and foals whose energy requirements are so much higher. In 2017, during one of the worst droughts, and despite our best efforts, we lost 5% of the Grevy zebra population. It is my great honor to introduce you to Peter Lalampa who will describe how we are addressing this significant threat. Thank you so much, Sheila, for your amazing presentation on supplementary feeding. Supplementary feeding is a short-term, but very expensive uh, undertaking. Our long-term goal is to have healthy rangeland. Healthy rangeland is where we have perennial grasses, working water cycle, you know, a balanced ecosystem. However, currently in northern part of Kenya, the rangelands are degraded. We've lost our perennial grasses and most of the area are bare ground. And when it rains, we lose most of our water through runoff or evapotranspiration. And so the ecosystem is no longer balanced. And so what's the future for pastoralism, as well as for wildlife conservation, especially for endangered species such as the zebra? The future lies on having healthy rangeland where we have abundant perennial grasses and water cycle. However, what are we doing to achieve this? As Grave Zebra Trust, we believe that the future of conservation, the future of having health rangeland is working with the local community. Our efforts are of training. We train on best rangeland management practice, but we also borrow indigenous knowledge, indigenous knowledge on how the land was in the past, what has changed, and why has it changed. So by bringing these two concepts together, we are able to come up with action plans to address the issue of land degradation. And so some of the action plans that we develop uh, through these trainings are clearing and seeding. So we clear indigenous invasive species such as acacia reficent. And at the same time, we do receding of these areas. And so from this effort, we've had amazing results. Some of the areas that were voluntarily cleared by the community, we've had perennial grasses coming back, and the whole land is covered. 
And it's not only the girls that has responded. We've had graves moving to these areas that were cleared. And so it shows that our rangeland interventions are really working. We also work with the community conservancies where we bring cattle from the community on a learning site where we pilot this best rangeland man management practice and we take these lessons to the community. And we've had really good results. This is Westgate learning site where you see amazing cover of the land. But we also work with the village-based committees. This is where we bring the elders, the women, and the warriors together to discuss what are the next actions they will take in their village to restore their landscape. And so we couldn't have achieved this effort waiting out for some champions. One of the champions is Mama Grave. We call her Mama Grave because she's our pioneer scout. She's worked as a scout. And from her efforts, uh, she was recognized as a Disney conservation hero. And so I welcome Mama Grave to share with you some of the lessons. Our la rangeland restoration program are all geared towards saving the gravies, but also uh, building resilient communities, communities that are able to withstand shocks, natural shocks such as drought, but also at times of diseases such as the COVID-19, the livestock economy was able to support uh, the pastoral communities that live in this area. They were not worried of closure of, uh, you know, places where they can buy grain because of their livestock support. We also provided them masks so that they can continue doing their day-to-day -day business of planning their range land, planning their grazing. And so all these efforts of mass production, rangeland restoration, could not happen without some champions. And one of them also is Damaris Likloy. So Damaris Likloy, I welcome her. She's our officer in charge of Women Empowerment Program. And so she's going to share with you some of the amazing work the women are doing in terms of uh, providing uh, face masks during this time of COVID-19. Hi, everyone. My name is Damaris Likloy. I work with the Grave Zebra Trust as a Women Empowerment Project Officer. The Grave Zebra Trust Reusable Sanitary Parts Project was also named by our women scouts. And this project helps the girls keep the girls in school. It also provides an hygienic option to the women and girls of our community, as well as providing economic empowerment to the women who are, who are, doing the, who are pro producing the parts. This part is zebra striped to make sure that it connects directly to the conservation of grave zebras. When COVID hit the world, we switched temporarily 
production of triple fly masks so that we can protect our community from the spread of COVID-19. Since one, one of, one of our uh, uh, graduate women was so much happy and encouraged that she can be able to produce a mask so that she can be able to protect our community from the spread of COVID-19. One evening, as since one went home, she found that one of our neighbors was waiting for her, hopefully, to get a mask from her. And since one provided her and her family with a few masks to protect herself and her family. Since one was so much happy with her friend, and she also felt that it's really encouragement that Grave Zebra came in to empower them and to empower us so that she can be able to support our community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Damaris. The year 2020 has been incredibly difficult for the global community. We are facing unprecedented environmental, economic and social challenges. In this time of uncertainty, the one thing that we can be certain of is our commitment and responsibility to this earth. We must continue to protect and nurture wildlife and wild spaces. Even though things seem out of reach and frightening, the one thing we can do is invest in the future. We can invest in nature. For the year 2021, the Grevy Zebra Trust is aiming to raise $850,000. This funding will enable us to continue the critical work that we are doing to save Grevy Zebra and build resilience in the ecosystem of Northern Kenya to support livelihoods and wildlife. We would love your help in reaching our goal. We are so grateful to our partners and friends who have already contributed towards this effort and we would love you to join them. Please consider making a donation today through the links provided by WCN or visiting our website grevizebratrust.org. We are so looking forward to connecting with you going forward. Please follow us on Instagram and Facebook and get in touch through our website. Thank you so much. We've loved being with you today.